Firstly, let me say, if you're a beginner to needle felting, you really don't need lots of fancy equipment. All you need is some wool and a special needle felting needle, and maybe a mat, but you might have that already. I'll come back to that later. If you just want to try needle felting, then it doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. However, my first tip is don't skimp when it comes to buying the needle felting needles. Try to buy your needles from a good craft shop or a reputable online needle felting supplier, as the needles do vary a great deal. If I'd started needle felting using the needles I got in this cheap style, starter kit I bought on Amazon. I would not love felting the way I do now. I only bought the kit because I wanted the multi-needle tool and it was the same price to buy this kit as buying the multi-needle tool on its own. But in case you've bought a kit like this I thought I'd put these needles to the test. So I took two similar amounts of coarse carded wool and stabbed each one hundred times in turn to see which one felted faster than the other. Using the cheap large needle on the left and one of my larger needles, a 36 gauge needle that I bought from a craft shop many years ago. So Sadly, they no longer stock them. But I'll put a couple of decent suppliers of needle felting needles in the description below. What you can't see here is that using the cheap needle doesn't feel pleasant. It's hard to explain, but it sort of feels rough. Looking at them close up, you can see my decent needle on the right has three well-defined notches spaced out along each edge. Whereas the cheaper needle on the left has three smaller and less well-defined notches that seem to be bunched up nearer to the point. These special barbs along the edge are what catches the fibres of the wool as you stab downwards and drags the fibres, tangling them into the other wool. Then because of the angle of the barbs, when you pull out the needle, it releases the wool and comes out smoothly. All this stabbing, a lot of times, tangles the wool fibres together and makes the wool more compact. The more you stab, the more compact it gets. So perhaps this difference in barbs on these two needles is why they feel so different. However, in the end, they did both felt the wool in roughly the same way. The ball I made with my decent needle did feel ever so slightly firmer, but it was hard to tell the difference really. Having said all this, when you're just starting out needle felting, I wouldn't worry too much about the gauges of needles. In the past, I've actually made small items like these with just one 40 gauge needle from the start to the finish. As you get more confident, you can then look into buying different gauges of needles. Remember, the higher the number, the finer the needle. My second tip is to buy whatever wool you can afford. Carded wool slithers or carded wool bats will be easier to use for beginners to needle felting, but there really isn't any wrong wool. If you've already bought lots of merino tops or roving don't worry you can still use it but you might find it harder to felt into shape and it may take a bit of practice to use this is what i found in a recent experiment i did to show how many stabs it took to felt carded wool compared to merino tops or roving I'll put a link to that video at the end. So what if you've only got roving or tops wool? Well if you can I'd recommend buying some white carded wool or carded bats to use as a core wool. This will be much easier to shape. Then you can coat this base of core wool with your coloured merino roving or tops wool. This cat and rabbit were both made with carded core wool first and then were coated in a layer of merino tops wool. And I think the finish is as good as the Pikachu where I covered it with yellow carded wool instead. I would say though it's easier to coat core wool with carded wool, but personally I find it easier to needle felt mouths and fine lines with merino tops or roving. I find you can get a thinner line with it. My third tip is don't buy an expensive felting mat until you know you love felting. Also that way you'll have an idea what kind of felting you prefer to do as this might affect your decision. You can use a basic sponge. This is a car cleaning sponge or you can use any sponge you might have lying around the house. The mat basically protects your working surface by giving the needle something to go into when it comes out the other side of your wool. So a cheap sponge is ideal when you're an absolute beginner and just trying out the craft. However, after using a sponge for a while, you'll notice bits of the sponge will break off, so they're not a long-lasting solution. The next type of mat I have is a small piece of foam that was included in the cheap starter kit I mentioned earlier. I find this especially useful if I'm felting tiny pieces. The wool doesn't seem to stick to this foam mat as much as if I was using my wool buddy mat, which I'll come to in a moment. After a while, this foam will also break down and no longer be very firm. You'll find the wool sinks into the foam and it becomes difficult to use. So then I bought a wool buddy, which cost me around £20 at the time. It's a lovely big working area and comes in different colours. If if I were to buy another one now though I would get a white one or cream as some of the wool from the mat can come off into your work especially when you're felting small or flat light coloured pieces. I found this when I tried to felt the whites of the rabbit's eyes. They ended up with rusty brown fibres in them but if you cover it with some clean cotton that does stop this from happening. So I have pieces of an old bed sheet that I've cut up to use for this. 
If you are felt in a flat two-dimensional picture, then this wool buddy mat would give you a lovely big space to work onto. The tool you saw me using there was a lint remover, which can be bought very cheaply on the internet. It's very handy for removing any strands of wool from the mat. However, I'd urge you to focus on buying decent needles and wool first. So now that you know what tools you'll need, you'll be able to get stabbing. But how will you know when to stop and get your item looking great? Well, in this video, I explain the way you can tell when to stop stabbing and the factors that will affect how many times you need to stab. I'd love to hear in the comments your experience of needles, walls and mats. And don't forget to click the like button. It really helps others to see this video. Thanks for watching.